Hi guys, my name is Lisa Maud. Uh, we are going to talk about Piaget's stages of cognitive development today. Uh, Jean Piaget was an, um, a Swiss psychologist uh, that looked at the way that children developed uh, the way they thought about the world and he said that um, the way of thinking is really an extension of biological processes. It's an extension of evolution um, and sort of learning on the go. Uh, so we're talking about cognition. So cognition is anything that has to do with um, the mental processes of memory, communicating, uh, the idea of knowing, uh, thinking. So that's cognition. So Piaget proposed that we all had schemas. Uh, and schema is a schema is a concept um, or framework that organizes a pattern of behavior or thought. Um, and, and we make sense of our world by constructing schemas. Um, Piaget's theory was that when a child learns a new thing, they will try to assimilate that new thing into their current schema. Uh, so for example, the child just learned a, that a, a, what a cow was, and when they see a dog, they may point to the dog and yell, cow, because they think that all four-legged animals are cows. And then when the child is then corrected and said, no, no, that's a dog, the child will accommodate their schema. They will change their framework, their understanding of the world to accommodate the new information. So that's the general basis of Piaget's um, theories. And he said that children between birth and 12 basically went through four stages of, um, of development. Of, of, they went through four different stages of, of changing the way they construct these schemas. Um, so the first stage is the sensory motor stage, and that was about birth to two years old. Um, and that is largely based on exploring the world through the senses. Um, touching, uh, putting their, anyone with small children knows that they'll put their mouth on anything and everything. Um, they'll smell things. They want to touch and grab everything out of your hands. Um, one key thing to think about is that children in this stage lacked the concept of object permanence. Object permanence is the idea that if you have, say, a toy and you cover it with a pillow, an adult knows that the toy is still there beneath the pillow. A child in the sensory motor stage does not know that toy is still beneath the pillow. It is gone. Um, this actually makes the game of peekaboo really fun for kids this age because you're gone. You're not there behind your hands. Half your face has literally disappeared. Um, and it's not as much fun when they're older. Uh, along with that idea of object permanence, um, a little halfway through this stage, about eight months to a year, they do start to develop a sense of object permanence, realizing, um, and when they do, they develop a sense of stranger anxiety. Um, so after eight months to a year, uh, children are not as willing to be held by strangers. If their caregiver leaves the room, um, they will be upset, they'll cry, and they, uh, those, if they develop quote-unquote secure attachment. That's another video. You should read about attachment theory. It's fascinating. Um, but if they demonstrate what's called secure attachment, they will acknowledge that the caregiver comes back into the room and they'll greet them with hugs and kisses and they will no longer be upset. Uh, so that's stranger anxiety. Okay, moving on to the pre-operational stage. Pre-operational stage is about um, two to six um, in Piaget's thinking. Um, let's see. Big thing here is the concept of egocentrism. So um, the idea that um, what I see is what I see, uh, and everybody else around me sees what I see and knows what I know. Um, so, and it's it's more than that. It's the inability to see things from another person's point of view. Um, so. For example, actually, here's a picture. Um, can I swoop it over? Nope. Hang on. I have a really awesome picture, I promise. Um, Piaget would sit a child and a doll at opposite ends of the table and tell the child to draw 
the mountains from the doll's point of view. Uh, so if the child was still in the pre-operational stage and still fairly egocentric, he would be unable to do this. Um, if they were beyond this stage, they would be able to sort of uh, postulate what the doll would be able to see. Um, so that is egocentrism. Uh, they're also, at this stage, able to use language pretty well. Um, you'll hear a lot of pretend play, uh, they'll make friends, but they don't necessarily have logic. So they have language, but not logic. Um, they also lack conservation. Um, they're, um, sorry, they lack the concept of conservation. So if you give a child at this stage a glass of orange juice in a short, fat glass, and then you give this child another glass of orange juice in a tall, skinny glass, the child will say the tall, skinny glass contains more orange juice. Um, and so you might have children, you know, if they get a, a, pl a plate with spaghetti instead of a bowl with spaghetti, they'll complain, say, the, the plate's too much, I can't eat this much. Put the exact same amount of spaghetti in a bowl and they'll eat it. Uh, parenting 101. Uh, so they, so they don't have a uh, sense that the, the volume of things are affected by their container. Um, the last thing is, while this is, gets confusing, they're still egocentric in this stage, but they start to develop what's called theory of mind. Um, so theory of mind is, starts to see things from other people's point of view. Um, and since Piaget, we've decided that a lot of these stages happen earlier than what he postulated, and they also just start, they start to develop earlier and continue developing sort of through these stages. So theory of mind is sort of starting to come out of egocentrism a little bit, um, but realizing that um, not all people see the same things. So for example, um, if a child sees um, the dad uh, put a baseball and ball bat by the door and then sees them and sees the dad walk away and then sees the mother put the baseball bat and ball in the closet when asked where will the dad look for the baseball bat um, children about the age of five will say he'll look for it by the door. Children at the age of three will say he'll look for it in the closet because they are still so much more egocentric. Um, so theory of mind is starting to see things from other people's point of view. Another example of theory of mind is a group of three-year-olds and five-year-olds both were shown a box of band-aids. When opening the box of band-aids, Oh, sorry. And then they were asked, what's inside? And everyone said, band-aids. When they opened the box, inside they found crayons. So, um, the f and the they said, now what will your friend think that hasn't seen the box? The five-year-olds all said, my friend will think there's band-aids inside. The three-year-olds all said, my friend will think there are crayons inside. Again, egocentrism versus theory of mind. All right, moving on to concrete operational. Um, at this point, they this is uh, between 7 to 11. At this point, they do have a concept of conservation. They'll understand that the smaller containers, um, or that volume is not affected by the shape of a container. Um, they're also able to do um, math at this point in such a way that if you ask them, what's 6 plus 8? They'll say 14. What's 14 minus 8? They'll say 6. They'll be able to reverse those math equations. Um, immediately. So it's the the very start of logic. Um, finally, the formal operational stage is about 12 onwards. Um, this indicates um, the ability to do more abstract reasoning and uh, and logic. So you can reason, you know, if A then B, if B then C, if A then C. Um, they can start talking about philosophy and world religions um, and things like that. And I think the image I have here is if A or B, then Y. 
pretty sure that's what that means. Um, <laughs> uh, one thing that's really interesting is when things go sort of wrong. Uh, you'll see children on the autism spectrum um, not be able to go through all these stages. They might st still be stuck in a very egocentric stage. Um.